faith has to be a choice and a decision of uh, that's our part to, for us to be in cooperation with God. Is that something you understand that? Otherwise, you wouldn't be much more than a robot if you didn't have a will and choice. God made you in his image and he endowed man with the freedom of will and choice. We call that a free moral agent. But God will enable us through the Holy Spirit when we yield to his will, plain and simple. First John said, if we walk in the light as he is the light. So God teaches us through many things. One of our greatest teachers is experience. Paul said, I be, I'm persuaded to believe. He was persuaded for what he'd experienced. Experience is a great teacher. You may be going through a great difficult experience. Well, you should ask God, what's he trying to teach you? What's he want you to know and do through that? But it's a revelator. It's a teaching device and tool of God. Now, God will lay things on your heart to do that's going to take faith to obey it. It may be some financial thing God wants you to give some amount he wants you to give and will, will are you going to exercise faith with, with and your choice to obey god let me give you a very popular scripture in luke 6 38 i know you've heard this preached a lot in regard to giving though interesting enough money's not mentioned here but you think that's what it's talked about it could be but that's not the only thing. In Luke 6, 20, 38, give, and it shall be given unto you. There's more things to give than money. Then he said, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give to your bosom. That's how they gathered up uh, from the marketplace. That's how they gathered the grain, the flour, and wheat, and sugar, and so forth. For with the same measure, that you meet, it shall be measured unto you. So in other words, our giving has an effect on our receiving. Now God's gonna test your faith and your obedience. And it comes down to choice, trust and obey. So this is the ABCs of Bible believing, practicing faith. It's practical. Yeah, you might, uh, Say to me, Brother Isom, my prayers aren't being answered. Why? Well, first of all, let me give you some biblical advice and take this to heart. I've taught you this many, many times, but that don't mean you're practicing it. And that don't mean you're continuing to practice it. First of all, what I advise you to do is get alone with God. Find somewhere you can be alone with God. You may have to get in your car, in the garage. You may have to drive somewhere and find a quiet, solitary place. Get alone with God. We used to have the church to go to. But don't recommend that right now. But anyway, uh, when you get alone with God, you need to clear your heart before God and cry out to God and confess and repent of every sin against God you have ever, ever done. Not only against God, but everyone. Everyone. You need to confess and repent every sin, wrong feeling attitude in your heart, wrong spirit against God or anyone else. Three types of sin. There's commission. That's sin of doing something you should not do, like lying, cheating, stealing, adultery, rebelling, and so forth. Commission. Then there's omission. The sin of not doing what you should do. Praying, reading your Bible, witnessing, going to church, loving your neighbor, for example. Then there's a third thing, maybe the more, most harmful thing, 
and that's a set of presumption. That's when you assume that you have the right to do something, but you don't know or even care maybe whether it's God's will. So you risk in doing something that's not God's will, and that displeases God. Romans 14, 23 says, if you do something with doubt, that will condemn you. And it says if it's not of faith, it's sin. Turn with me into Psalms 19. If you haven't seen this verse before, you need to see it and mark it and know it. It's the sin of the presumptuous sin. And we find in Psalm 19 and verse 12, who can understand his errors, his wrongs? Cleanse me from secret sins, secret faults. And that word means presumptuous. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. That means you're presuming, you're assuming that it's right, or you don't know that it's right. You just assume it, and you go on and do it anyway. There may be a doubt or a question. So let them not, let presumptuous sins not have dominion over me. Then I'll be upright. I have a right heart, and I shall be innocent of the great transgression. You mean presumptuous sin can lead to great transgression? Then he said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And there's a lot of preaching in that right there. So we need to confess our sins with real repentance. We need to confess and, and we need to give forgiveness to everyone who has hurt us or harmed us and uh, hurt you or your loved ones. Then we need to claim, we need to claim, sorry about that. Turn on speaker and let hear some preaching. We need to confess and forgive everyone that's hurt us. Hardest thing there is to do. And claim in the name of Jesus and his blood and his eternal promises. And we need to, we need to thank God. We need to thank God and ask him for faith to trust him to always keep his word. In 1 John 5, 13 and 14, these things we know we have of him because we believe he's rewarded them that diligently ask him. If we ask, we shall receive. If we ask it in his name, with faith believing. Now, when you confess all your sins and you forgive all the wrongs that's been done to you, it will unload Satan's ammunition of your past against you. It'll unload his gun. He'll shoot blanks because you put it all under the blood. Now you need to get to the blessed place, my brother and sister, where there's nothing between your soul and the Savior. Make the choice to be a doer of God's word. Now you're when you get to that place, you're on the best praying ground you've ever been on. And boy, then you're in a good place to ask your prayers to be answered. Lost loved ones to be saved, backsliders restored. Pray for your church, brothers and sisters in Christ. We need to learn how to be doers of the word and not hearers only. It's our sacred responsibility. And when you get there, you get to that place, you can see souls saved that otherwise would go to hell forever. Ezekiel 3, 18 through 20, God requires the blood of the unworn soul uh, to our hands. So there, there, will, there will be... So there will be bloody hands at the judgment seat of Christ. So I'm asking you tonight to bow your heads and make that choice of faith to God.
Dear Lord, help the listener. Help the listener, O oh God, to come before thy throne of grace, thy heavenly divine presence, to that blood anointed mercy seat, and I praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And might we tonight be reconciled to thee fully and completely. Nothing between our soul and the Savior, praise God. Thank you for the word of truth that never returns void. Thank you for the promises that never lose its power and the blood of Jesus that never loses its power to cleanse us of our sin and redeem our soul. We give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.